Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we are going to run one of our little initial video uh, pages here on projectile motion. Okay. Um, all right, so it says we have a scenario here, and this is a super common, super common scenario where we're going to start working through some of these formulas. Rock is thrown horizontally for the speed of V from the top of a cliff of height H as shown in the diagram to the right. So it looks like it's going up a little bit, but it's really just throwing it just straight horizontally. They have setting some variables. Height H, that would be like this height right here. Um, velocity V is this guy right here. And time is just going to be T. On the diagram, choose your horizontal and vertical origins. Label your choice of x, 0, y, 0. You can have multiple options here, any option really, but I'm going to take this point right here as my origin of 0. To my right is going to be my positive x, and up is going to be positive y. Choose a, choose a horizontal or vertical. Okay, we did that already. Part B, identify the equation that that can be used to solve it takes the, the, the rock to, the time it takes the rock to the ground. Write the equation below. If you have any troubles, check your equation sheet. And you know, finding what equation to use is really a big part of this class. So my main two formulas are x equals xi plus vit plus one half a t squared and vt equals vi plus a um, at. Okay. So in this one, they're not really saying yet um, to what, in what terms of what variables this one say find time. Okay, well, in the end here, in this one, if you get a little farther ahead, you'll say, oh, use it, rearrange it, make sure you're using these variables. Okay, so that means I need to use the these guys right here just for in my equations, which, which makes this equation not going to work because I don't have the height. Okay, so, and as you get farther along, everyone's in different places at different times, but as you get far along to realize that we need this equation for this one. So what do we have here? Well, I have xt, that would be the location, let's say, at the bottom, and at x. So I subtract this over, I get delta x, the change in x. So I want to, I want to basically, or we could say this guy equals zero. Um, this guy here, and I'm kind of working on this guy right now. I'm going to rearrange this equation solving for time. And there's one key part of that just makes it a little bit easier. Because I'm throwing it horizontally, okay, it's really important, um, that whenever we're solving almost any, this is something that I always preach, whenever you want to find anything about projectile motion, the first thing you need is time in the air. It doesn't matter if you're throwing it down, doesn't matter if you're throwing it horizontally, doesn't matter if you're throwing it at an angle, you need time in the air. Time in the air is always, always, always going to deal with the y axis. The y axis gives me my time in the air, and the x axis gives me my range, how far I go. So, that being said, my initial vertical velocity is zero. All my velocity is horizontal. That's gone. Okay, now I need this here is uh, 1 half at. This a is gravity. So let's just take that and rearrange that. x, t, which is the, look, is h. Um, let's just call h because that's what they're asking for us to do. But h equals 1 half at squared. So here they're having us to maybe derive a formula or solve with uh, variables. And you can see. Those types of questions they ask could be super complicated, but not too bad. Um, so let's solve it out. Um, this guy here would be actually would be divided by two. So make sure K with that gel, that algebra. 
So let's solve out for this guy. Multiply by 2, uh, divide by a, and square root. So things just move diagonally. The 2 is going to move up here, the a is going to move down here, and we're going to square root. So it's 2h over a equals time. So I just move diagonally. If there's no addition subtraction, things move diagonally. And then to get rid of the square, I'm going to square root. And that is my answer. Okay. All right, part D. Identify an equation that can be used to solve the horizontal distance between the time, between the bottom and the cliff and the place uh, where the rocks lands. Okay, write the equation below. Uh, so again, we're finding a distance. Anytime you're solving for a distance, well, you've got to use the distance. We call this distance formula. So xt equal, uh, equals xi plus vit plus one half at squared. Okay. So they want us to solve it for d. D is just going to be xt in the x in the horizontal position. Um, now notice that in the y position I still used x, okay, which is fine. Um, x is a location on a line, so whether it's vertical or horizontal. Okay, so I just need to solve for uh, for this guy here, location. It says rearrange the equation you wrote um, above in part d to solve for the horizontal distance between the bottom of the cliff and the place where the rock lands in terms of h, all right, um, v and physical constants necessary okay so in this case uh, I want to find x t and I'm going to call that guy all right so if x t is missing okay x t equals okay uh, x i plus v i t plus one half a t squared Okay, so in the horizontal direction, you should realize that um, we have a velocity initial, but gravity is pulling in the downward direction. So there's no actual force in the horizontal direction. And if there's no force, then there's no acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. That's Newton's second law of motion. No force, no acceleration. So acceleration equals zero. So this point, x t equals my zero point plus initial velocity, which we is calling v, uh, v t, and then this guy is zero. So the question is, is okay, are we done? x t equals v t, and that's fine. The answer is no, because it says, Answer in terms of h, v, and any physical constants. Well, we didn't use h. Okay. Um, so I wanted to, they want you to do is take this equation and sub it in for time. That's going to be pretty common. So just going to be simple. X t equals the velocity times the square root of two h. Okay over a and at this point excellent little situation here okay we have a formula that tells us our distance based on the height of the the cliff initial velocity and a of course is gravity which is 9.8 okay excellent uh, exercise here well set up so it says if how, if at all, would the equations written in part C and E change if the projectile motion for the projectile was thrown from a cliff at an angle above the horizontal? Explain your answer. So in this case, they're asking us here is would this thing change if we provided an angle here? Okay. And let's go back quickly and look at the two formulas that part we wrote in part C and part E. So part C was this guy right here, okay. Um, okay, and then at part D, 
D would be this guy right here. So let's put this over here now. This guy here was derived based on this formula. Now, if we throw in an angle, okay, like this, then we have different components. And in this point here, we throw an angle, we're going to have um, initial velocity. Some of our velocity will go on the x component. And some of our will go in this direction, velocity at uh, y, initial y. So at this point, and if we're looking at some of our trig functions, then you should note that this being uh, perpendicular would be the sine function component, and this is the x function component. So the answer is one problem with this guy is that this guy would not be zero. It would be the sine function component of velocity. So it would be different. There, you can't drop that guy out. So we need to have that component added in here, um, which would give us another t value here, uh, which would make it a little more difficult, okay? A little more complicated. And then down here, what, what would change here? Um, all right, this guy here, um, all the velocity, again, we're throwing at an angle, okay? And four, we took all our velocity, initial just became the x position, but now some of it's not there. So, not, yeah, so this is going to change here too. So take a moment, and that's as far as I'm going to go with this guy. I'm going to let you come up with what you think. Um, would best explain this, okay? And it says, how would it change if it was thrown at an angle to explain your answer? So they're not, they're not really asking you to fix it, just say how would it change, and kind of discuss that as well. Thank you very much.